Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. In today's video I'm gonna build something and I'm gonna build something with this PCB and uh, this PCB is a PCB for a Commodore keyboard tester. So, this Commodore keyboard tester is a recent project by Sven Petersen. Sven Petersen makes a lot of uh, interesting stuff for the Commodore machines and you can uh, visit his uh, GitHub page at this address. And I'll come back to the details about um, this project and uh, take a look at the documentation that he has made for it. Now, before I start, I just want to say thanks to my sponsor, PCBWay. I'm not sure if they made this particular PCB, probably not, but I have had them made a lot of other PCBs for me. These are a couple of examples and uh, I think they produce excellent uh, quality PCBs and uh, have excellent uh, services and uh, delivery time. If you visit PCBWay.com, you can get an instant quote on uh, very good quality PCBs for uh, affordable uh, prices. And if you have advanced needs for PCB manufacturing, then check out their advanced PCB options at pcbway.com. No, this keyboard tester, it doesn't contain any electronic components at all, actually. It's just uh, the PCB and uh, some uh, contacts and uh, connectors, yeah, and a little uh, cable here and uh, a test lead, this one I provided myself, it was not in the disc kit from Sven. And of course I paid for it with my own money. And the whole idea behind this is that it makes it easier to test all the keys on different keyboards without having to take the keyboard apart and testing the resistance on every single key on the actual keyboard. So you build this and then you can connect the different keyboards to the different connectors uh, directly. And then you use your multimeter on uh, the two contacts that goes here. And uh, yeah, you can check out the resistance on all the different keys by pressing them and looking at the multimeter at the same time. But before I start shouldering, let's take a look at the, the project on Sven's uh, GitHub page and uh, see what the documentation tells us. So if you visit uh, github.com and you want to find Sven Petersen's um, page, then just search for Commodore Keyboard Tester, for example. And here you see the link to that repository, Sven Petersen 1965. And here is uh, the explanation on what it is. And uh, if you go into revision one, which is the last one, you find the documentations for um, this project. Uh, and you also find the Gerber files and things you need if you want to order uh, the PCB from, like, say, um, PCB Way. And if you go into PDF, then you find uh, the documentation for this project. Yeah, bill of materials is there. Project documentation goes through everything. It has uh, the board layout and the schematics. And these are tables over the keyboard uh, matrices. So you learn a bit about how keyboards work and a little bit about how to assemble the things and the gotchas you need to know about before you start. Here's about that connector for the 128. And how you use the keyboard tester is obviously described here. What you can expect of values of resistance. 
Here's also a little uh, description about how you can clean and fix a keyboard that is not working properly. How you can rejuvenate the keyboard rubbers with uh, lye, for example. Finally, here are some schematics. So there's all you need for that project if you want to learn more about it or if you want to order the parts and the PCB for making one yourself. Okay, let's turn on the soldering station, get some heat into the soldering iron and start soldering. Now, if you want to build something like this yourself, you can get all these parts quite um, cheap on different uh, stores. Uh, nothing special about uh, these, but uh, you should read the documentation up front because uh, there's a couple of gotchas there, uh, especially regarding the connector for the Commodore 128 keyboard. Because it has a special connector that's not possible to find anywhere, so uh, you need to make a special arrangement there. And I'll come back to that when I start uh, soldering in that. For this job I'm going to use this um, PCB holder, makes it a lot easier to solder. You get the PCB up from uh, the table and uh, you can turn it around. And it's quite stable because this is a little bit heavy. Since this is a new PCB of good quality, I'm not gonna bother with using uh, flux when soldering, but uh, it's uh, still a good idea to clean it off with some uh, alcohol in case there are some residue fat or anything like that still remaining. I'm gonna start with a C64 and WIC20 connector that goes here and that's just a row of pin headers. There's only one gotcha here and that is the pin 2 is uh, no pin, uh, it's not connected. And that is how the, the connector is keyed so you know which direction it goes and uh, I just pull it out like this. You could of course just solder it in and then cut it off afterwards, but uh, yeah, it's quite easy to drag it out. Yeah, I'm just gonna solder in one point and then align it and then solder the rest. Just use a little blue tack to keep it in place. Clean off the solder iron tip and uh, yeah, start soldering. So now I got the first and it is not uh, 90 degrees exactly, but I just uh, use my soldering iron and just move, move it a little bit and uh, I burnt myself because I had my finger on that pin. So now I think it is uh, quite straight and I can uh, solder the other side. And then I just uh, push it down while I am uh, heating up those two points. So now it's quite flush with the board and I can solder in the remaining pins. Don't use too much heat for a long time uh, or else you will melt the plastics around the pins. Yeah, that was the, the hole without the pin. Well, it got a little bit of solder in it now. The pins are sticking out a couple of millimeters on the back side, but I'm not gonna cut them off. The C16 connector is uh, similar to the Commodore 64, but it has a different um, pin layout or the pins are arranged differently. Um, but it still has an no pin as a number two, so I'm removing that pin and then just solder it in. Okay, 
me just check to see that no pins are bridged together. Looks all right. For the Commodore 128D and the SX64, you have this connector and it uses a standard 25 pin D connector. You just solder it in like that. You can uh, I use some uh, <laughs> mounting screws here. I'm not gonna bother with that. I just use my same method there, fix it down with a little blue tack, solder one pin and then the rest. Yeah, I actually solder two pins and then I adjust it. So it got a little bit skewed there, just gonna melt and uh, yeah move it a little bit press it down so now it sits in a perfect position and that's a lot of pins it's a little bit hard to come down to the pin in between the other pins, but uh, just move the soldering iron and uh, yeah, it should work. Here too, don't dwell too long on the heat or else you will melt the uh, plastics inside the contact, which is not good. If you're afraid about uh, too much heat, then just take a pause and let it cool down and uh, wait a little bit until it's cold and then continue. Okay, that was it. Now for the Commodore 128 connector, it's a little bit more uh, difficult and uh, here you need to check what uh, Sven wrote in the documentation because you can't simply use uh, rows of pin headers like this in uh, this connector it won't fit because the pitch is uh, a little bit different however what you can do is use individual uh, pin headers and place them into the holes like so however for uh, these to become straight and fit in, into the contact you actually need a keyboard for the 128 and use the connector place all the pins inside the connector and then place it inside um, the PCB and solder it in so that's exactly what I'm gonna do now here's a good old Commodore 128 and I'm gonna open it up now just to take uh, the keyboard out and uh, yeah then we can make that uh, contact yes and here is that uh, problematic uh, keyboard connector um, which is um, impossible to find so the trick then is to insert all these pin headers before you solder them in like this They're all in and now I'm just going to insert the connector uh, into the PCB and then it will be positioned and perfectly placed according to the contact. However, the pins are a little bit uh, loose and they <laughs> are not aligned. So this might be a little bit hard to position and get into all the holes. They're all in now, so I just uh, need to fix this a little bit and um, try to solder here in place. I think it sits perfectly fine now, so just gonna solder in the rest and we're done. So 
let's take a look now this should fit perfectly in that uh, connector hopefully <laughs> yeah so now we're done with that and uh, just a little bit more soldering next up is uh, a little switch on these two jumpers that selects uh, between 128 and SX64 mode on this connector so yeah Sven provided me with this little switch that's flush with the board switch is switching nice <laughs> Then we have the lap jacks uh, that goes here and uh, yeah, these are for ease of use if you have a multimeter connector leads um, with banana plugs in one end. These are not going to be soldered, they have uh, nuts on the back side so There's also some alternative uh, connectors for um, the multimeter. Just use regular pin headers, these straight or uh, angled ones. Then we need a short wire to connect um, these contacts. I just made a little uh, too short wire here. <laughs> Make a little longer. Just gonna pre tin the ends first and then I can solder it in. This is kind of thick wire, hopefully, it will go through uh, the hole. If not, I will find another type of wire. Yeah, I think this works okay. Just solder them in from the other side. Right, almost finished. Just need to solder in these small wires into these uh, contacts and we are done completely. That's one. Nope. Maybe I should fill this hole up with some uh, solder first. <laughs> Not really sure if these lab jacks are meant for soldering in uh, the back like this, or this is how. Uh, Sven did it in his documentation. Yeah, it's there. If they come loose, I can just screw them between um, the two nuts there. Okay, that was uh, the soldering and um, just a few things left. And uh, one of those is uh, these standoffs. So if you want to raise this and place it on um, in a case or something like that, we can use these. I'm just gonna install them. Maybe I'll find some 3D printed uh, case I can put it in. The PCB is now finished actually, and uh, I'm just gonna clean a little bit off the back here with some alcohol. And um, yeah, then we have one more um, connector or <laughs> cable to make. To make this work with um, the Commodore SX64 keyboard. And the reason we need to make this converter cable is because um, while the Commodore 128D has a female connector for the keyboard, 
the SX64 has uh, the opposite, the male one, so we need to convert using these uh, nice uh, connectors here. I don't think I need this long flat cable, I'm just gonna cut it a little bit shorter, then I have some spares for later. Just gonna make the end straight here. So I think I only need like this length. This obviously goes into this connector and then I wanna have uh, the flat cable on uh, this side. And uh, the red stripe on pin one and pin one is uh, there. So it will be like this, not that it matters, but uh, yeah, that's the reason you have this red line is that it's supposed to go on pin one. This can be a little bit tricky to make, but um, just place um, the cable into um, the, the tracks here. Looks like it is one wire too much. Not really sure, it's a little bit too wide. Yes, in fact, this has 26 uh, wires, so just gonna rip off uh, one. Okay, now it should fit perfectly in here. Then you press it onto the uh, connector and uh, yeah, you see these uh, teats, these go through the isolation of uh, the cable and uh, yeah, grip to the wires. Just need to align it properly so that uh, it goes correctly. Obviously there's a tool for this which I don't have. We can make it without the tool. So now it looks like uh, these teeth are gripping correctly. And now we need some force and um, <laughs> you can use a big uh, plier or something. I have this small vise. <laughs> that looks all right. So now I'm just going to press it down and uh, this will make an even pressure on the whole uh, contact. Obviously don't over do it and then you destroy the contact. Seems like it uh, was pressed more on the other side. Just gonna shift it a little bit over. It should click into place. Yeah, it clicked. Okay, I think that's done that side and then just the same on the other side. Just need to make sure that the other connector um, matches up with the first one with the regards of pin one and that's uh, on this side. So the retainers clicked into place and we're finished with this one. I'm just going to check if this cable is all right. I'm just going to check a few pins and see if they connect. Try pin one. Yep. Pin two. And then the last pin. Yeah. Yeah, they all seem to work. Final thing to do is uh, to make uh, the test leads because we need some way to secure uh, the test leads going to the multimeter. You can obviously do it like this, but uh, that's a little bit awkward. Uh, hold like that and press with the keys on the keyboard. <laughs> Instead, I'm gonna make a real test lead that we can just plug in. And I just bought this cheap um, uh, <laughs> test leads here. I'm just gonna cut off those. I just thin the end of uh, the wires. I also laid it double so it's uh, thicker. 
So now it should uh, be better inside the banana plug. Yeah, now it's sitting there tight. Okay, now we're ready to test some uh, keyboard. And I can just plug this right into my multimeter here. And then to test, we obviously just uh, use continuity mode or uh, ohms mode. Set the range, for example, to uh, yeah, not kilo ohms, but like ohms. And then we simply just connect the keyboard and I already have my Commodore 128 keyboard out, so I'm gonna start with that. I hooked up the keyboard and we can see that uh, now we have uh, some ohms here, but that is because it's upside down and pressing on the keyboard. So according to the documentation, we should see between uh, like zero and uh, 100 ohms, maybe up to 300 ohms, but uh, not in the kilo ohms range because then there is uh, too much resistance and uh, the keyboard is not functioning. I think uh, the documentation says that uh, 3 kilo ohms is uh, perhaps the maximum value that would register as a key press in a computer. Okay, I know this keyboard is working, so we should see pretty low values. Let's just start with a few keys here. Okay, nothing. Hmm, it doesn't register anything. Something's wrong. So this is uh, unexpected. I was expecting each key to produce uh, some resistance. Uh, however, I need to press two keys. <laughs> and I don't know if this is something special with this keyboard. Let's uh, test with a Commodore 64 keyboard then. If I remember correctly, this keyboard is uh, quite poor and uh, yeah, will be interesting to see how it registers. And now we have the missing pin, should be here where there's no hole. And that fits right in. Well, let's try and push a key. Nothing. Yeah, it's the same here, you have to push uh, two keys at the same time. I think I need to read the documentation uh, one more time. Uh, probably something I missed. Okay, I figured it out. Uh, I had the range for um, two digits only and uh, <laughs> when I press one key, it goes uh, just over 100 ohms. So it didn't register that at all as a measurement. Uh, however, when you press two, then the resistance uh, goes down obviously. And three, even more and four. Because when you have uh, several resistors in parallel, then the total resistance will be lower, obviously. So this works just fine. Oh, there's a few keys that have a little bit high values. Uh, yeah, let's run through this. Uh, two, three hundred ohms. 180. Oh, this one is pretty bad. Five hundreds. I mean, the keys still works with a resistance uh, around, like, say, 500 ohms, but then you have to press harder. <laughs> okay, the F1 key does not produce anything. It's up in the 1K, over 1K. Then it slowly goes down. <laughs> so that's a bad one. F2 is good. F5 is pretty poor. F7, yeah, so some of these keys have a high resistance and need some cleaning, obviously. There are several ways you can clean it up, but you have to disassemble it and take out the key plungers and then you can try and clean the, the little uh, contacts on the key plungers. I have done that several times. Next is this uh, 128D keyboard and this goes into the connector here like so yeah now this switch is set to 128 let's check it out yeah 80 good value 70 140 
here. Then we have this 4080 display and uh, when you press that it is constant uh, resistance. No scroll. Yeah, some values are a couple of hundred and this keyboard actually works just fine. Final test is uh, SX64 keyboard which I got here and uh, I think this is kind of dirty. Um, it looks, looks all right, a little bit dust. And this has this uh, weird uh, connector here. Um, but this is not correct because uh, this is in fact a male connector. Now obviously it doesn't fit and it can't fit on this one. I'm not really sure why. This is uh, the extension for the SX64. It says in the documentation that the original uh, keyboard cable does not fit into the female D-sub, which is this, and that is obviously correct. It is uh, too small, uh, but it fits into a male one, which is obviously not correct, because you can't, <laughs> you can't connect to male connectors like that. And I see now why I should have made this cable longer after all, because this one is obviously going into here. <laughs> so that was my mistake and uh, now I learned that, but uh, I can redo that uh, later. Maybe it's uh, long enough after all. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. I thought you would, would just extend the original uh, keyboard cable. So this one fits into uh, here and then it goes into here. So now I figured it out and uh, yeah, just place it like that. Okay, let's see now. Do we have any resistance? And now we need to turn that switch over, which I almost forgot, to SX64 mode. And let's see, do we have any resistance here? Yes, we already have a few ohms. 36. Yeah, this keyboard uh, seems to be nice. Just 7 ohms there. 8. So this is one of the better ones, and uh, yeah, I think I remember now that I have actually restored this keyboard uh, in my um, SX64 video series, uh, but that was another keyboard, but I remember I took uh, both keyboards at the same time. And there's one key that does not register at all, that's the X. Maybe the range is wrong again, yeah. Something happened now, it registers uh, 4K all the time. <laughs> so the keyboard seems to have a, a resistance of 4K when no keys are pressed. Uh, so when you press a key then you have a, a connection between the rows and columns on those lines and then you get the lower resistance. But still the X is not working at all, so yeah, that needs to be fixed. But the values are quite low on uh, almost every key. Okay, that was it for the keyboard testing. I uh, could have tested the C16 keyboard. I have a Commodore C16, but uh, yeah, I'm sure it works. I'm not gonna open it up and uh, take out that keyboard uh, now. Not until I eventually need to take it out to test it, if it uh, performs badly or something later on. But this was a nice uh, keyboard tester, uh, nothing fancy, it just m makes it easier to measure the resistance on all the keys and that's it. Would it be nice to make something with uh, like an Arduino or something that could uh, do a full keyboard test and uh, every key press you 
do get logged and uh, you can download a kind of report or something like that. <laughs> yeah, just thinking loud here. All right, that was it for this video. A uh, very nice little uh, tester device uh, made by Sven Petersen and uh, very good quality and very good explanation and documentation as usual. So that's really great. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you did then please hit the subscribe and the like button. That will help me a lot. And a special thanks goes to my Patreons. Uh, see you, bye bye.